my name is John Sharp. Um, I was asked to come up here today. It sort of, I think, evolved from a meeting that I attended two or three years ago, the Landlords Association, wasn't it? No. Yeah. Somebody from the Landlords uh, mentioned my name and they got in touch with me and one thing led to another and I indicated that I'd be happy to come up and, and uh, meet with the group. Uh, this is on the property taxation. Um, and I, I guess the first question is you, you have to ask yourself, is the property tax fair? How do you determine whether it's fair? And if you determine that it's unfair, what can you do about it? I mean, those are the questions that we have to address. First of all, I want to uh, put in a disclaimer here. I am not an attorney. No way what I'm saying here should be um, misconstrued to giving legal advice. I'm here to discuss the property tax system in the state of Illinois um, to the best of my knowledge and from the experiences that I had. Uh, each year across the state, billions of dollars are collected in the property tax, in the form of the property tax, and unfortunately in the last few years, Local units of government have become more and more reliant on it because the state has been falling back on payments uh, that they, they uh, formerly made. We collect all that property tax and uh, it's used to fund our units of government, communities, counties, townships, our school districts all kinds of special par uh, districts, park districts, uh, conservation districts, library districts, and so on. So I think we all know that the property tax plays an important role in our lives. And, and most people I, I talk to feel that we, the property tax is here to stay. Uh, they want to pay their fair share, but they don't want to be expected to pay more than, than what they should fairly pay in the property tax. And when you take it the next step, you ask them, well, are you being treated fairly? Most people look at their tax bill and say, you know, this seems to be awfully high, I, but I really don't know. And so that's sort of what we're here to discuss today. My first encounter with the property tax was a personal one. A long time ago, I was state representative here uh, from 72 to 80. In 1978, my wife and I, we built our home to raise our family in, in a small communities uh, in Macoupin County. To kind of date myself, for the lot and the house, turnkey house cost me $50,000 <laughs> in 1978. And that was kind of a high price back then, you know. I had to squeeze every penny I could to come up with the money, the 25% I needed to put down to build that house. But anyway, when I got my first assessment, and that was shortly after the state uh, passed legislation outlining what property, what level property should be assessed at in the state of Illinois. It was at 33 and a third percent of fair market value. Okay, so I got my first assessment and it was $13,900. Okay, it represented 28% of, of what I paid for it. And I thought, well, that isn't too bad. This, you know, the state says we should be assessed at 33 and a third. But then one of the members of the house was always on the floor screaming and hollering about how counties were assessing property and that so many counties assessed it too low and you know on and on and on. So I went to him and I, I, I asked him about whether about the assessment on my property and he looked up, it was in Macoupin County, well the median level of assessments in the county was 18 percent and I was assessed at 28 percent and so I thought, well, if I don't do something about this, I'm going to get a multiplier put on, 
and I'm going to end up being above the 33 and a third percent. And so I filed the appeal with the Board of Review. I thought, well, first of all, I called the township assessor. And she him hauled around and she finally got upset with me and said, well, you people out there, if you can build that house, you can afford to pay the taxes. And I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. And I, I also realized she was of the opposite political party I was, so she wasn't <laughs> going to be too receptive to me. So I filed an appeal with the Board of Review. And there were, there were three members on the Board of Review. They actually came to my house to visit me. And they sat in my living room and I sat there and I explained the whole thing. They agreed with everything I said. They thanked me for my time and they left. And I got a decision and they lowered my assessment by $500. <laughs> I thought, well, this, this doesn't make any sense. It should be several thousand dollars or several hundred dollars. No, it was thousand. And so I filed an appeal with the state. <laughs> And in Macoupin County at that time, they had just changed the supervisor of assessments. And I'll never forget, I was at a political function. The old supervisor of assessments came up to me and said, why didn't you come talk to me? I could have taken care of that. And I said, well, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to take place. And so I filed the state appeal, waited about six months, got a hearing notice, my wife and I went to the courthouse. There were two state appeals that year, the Norfolk and Western Railroad and John Sharp and Carol Sharp. <laughs> I, I presented my case and, and when I got the decision it was in my favor, of course, because I had all the costs. The new supervisor assessment said, well, I really don't know anything about it. I wasn't the assessor and blah, blah, blah. Well, being in the legislature, it ended up in the newspapers. And all the people in my neighborhood complained and the county had to come down and reassess the whole neighborhood. And I thought to myself, boy, this isn't really the way it's supposed to to happen, but you know, I dealt with the issues that came before the legislature and voted accordingly, but never really got that much involved with the issues of property taxes at the time. But my first experience was not the most favorable one. The savings the first year amounted to about $400. You may say, well, that's nothing, but in 1978, $400 had a pretty good significant value on your property tax and over the years it, it's amount to a large amount of money. So I, I learned several things from it. First of all, it's the property owner's responsibility to check their assessment to make sure it's right. And if you don't, by default, you agree with the assessments that's given to you. If you don't feel that the property tax is right and you want to proceed with arguing for a lower assessment, you have to go forward, gather the evidence necessary to uh, do an appeal, and go through the whole sort of um, obstacle course of filing a property tax appeal. Has anybody here ever done it? Oh my. <laughs> you have. You know what it is. <laughs> Lots of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Now, the John, question is, when, when can you file an appeal? Well, it used to be in smaller counties like Morgan County, the deadline was August the 10th, or 30 days after publication. In larger counties, it was September 10th, or 30 days after publication of the assessment list. Well, a couple years back, the legislature, in their wisdom, changed it to just 30 days after publication, and that publication can come anytime. So if you're concerned about uh, the assessment on your property, you have to keep track of when the county's going to publish. Now, in Morgan County, they're supposed to be publishing 
the end of December. Once they publish, you have 30 days to file an appeal. Or, by default, you accept the assessment as is. Now, if you talk to people, so many people say, you ask them, is your property tax fair? Well, people say, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I should do something about it. I think the assessment, my, I'm paying too much property tax. Well, paying too much property tax is not an argument. You have to look at the assessment on your property and the market value that the county puts on your value, on your property. And is that a fair figure? Well, first of all, are there any indicators in an area that assessments may not be uh, what they should be? In other words, are there some st uh, statistical indicators that'll point out that there's a problem with the assessments in a particular area or community or a county? And I looked up for Morgan County, the most recent that I had was 2013. One of the indicators you look at is the coefficient of dispersion. Okay, or the, yeah, the coefficient of dispersion. Now the coefficient of dispersion basically tells you if you had similar properties, how you can expect the assessments to fall around the median level of assessments. Now in, in Morgan County in 2013, the median level assessment was about where it should be at 33.3% or 33.02%. And assessments should be at 33 and a third percent of market value. But Morgan County had a coefficient of dispersion of 22.52%. What that told you, if you took three similar properties, you could very well expect one to be as assessed at the 33 and a third percent, one at 22% above the median, and one at 22% below the median level of assessments. Now let's look at what that'll do to a property. If you have a house or a business or whatever, and let's say the value on the real estate is $120,000. At 33 and a third percent, you would expect the assessment to be $40,000. With a tax rate of 9%, the tax bill would be $3,200 a year. Now, that's not looking at exemptions and all that. Now, with a coefficient of dispersion of 22%, you can expect a similar property to be assessed 22% below, could very well be. And if that's the case, they would be assessed at $31,000 and paid $2,480 a year. And you may find another property quite similar to those, worth $140,000, assess 22% above are 49,000 and they'd be paying $3,900 a year. So in Morgan County you could expect similar properties to have a range, a very wide range of assessments. Have you ever spoken with anyone that lives in a house similar to yours and they're paying a lot less in property taxes and you kind of scratch your head or someone that's paying a lot more? Sure, you run into that as a realtor. You run into that quite it often. It happens don't you? all the time. Just yeah, ask it happens all the time. Mount Avenue. Right. If you live on Mound Avenue or West Winds or anywhere in that area, you'll find a great deal of dis dispersion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that, especially in that year that you're talking about. Yeah, and the state comes up with this from the sales that are sent to the state, and they review them, and they compare the sale price to the assessed level. And they come up with these uh, uh, indicators. <clears throat> Another indicator is uh, the price-related uh, differential. And the price-related differential uh, is an indicator whether higher-valued properties tend to be assessed at a lower level or lower-priced properties 
tend to be assessed at a lower level. If it, uh, the indicator, if, if there's uh, uniformity of 1.03, if it's above that, higher priced properties tend to be under assessed and lower priced properties to be over assessed. And in Morgan County in that year, it was 1.07. So that said that the lower priced properties tended to be over assessed. Now, I, first of all, I don't want anyone to think that I'm pointing a fing finger at the assessor's office or the staff saying that there's some kind of conspiracy underway to underassess higher value properties or whatever or pay as, as you <laughs> let the property owner beware. It's just the nature of the property tax system. Could you imagine trying to come up with the correct value for every property in Morgan County? I, I really wouldn't want the job to tell you the truth. It'd be a very difficult job to do. But the important thing you have to realize is that as a property owner, it is your responsibility to monitor the value the county has on your property. And if the date goes by, for you to <coughs> appeal that value, then you've accepted it by default and there's not a thing you can do about it. Okay? Now, if you've determined that you, you um, suspect you're overvalued by the county, how do you go about gathering the evidence to file an appeal? Well, there's, there's four main areas you can look at, uh, accepted by the, the State Property Tax Appeal Board. One is if it's a recent sale and an arm's length transaction. As a realtor, if you sell a property to someone, it's an arm's length transaction, right? It's, it's an open market transaction. Buyers and sellers come together, offers and counter offers and all that are made, and they settle upon a price. Now, if you take that selling price and go to the county records, you can tell real fast whether it's overvalued or undervalued. Because the assessor has a value, and you know what the, the purchase price is. And if that's the case, it really ought to be a rather perfunctory thing to go in and talk to the assessor and get it corrected. Have you, do they correct them like that? They yeah. Do. Yeah, they, they'll do that um, without any difficulty. And if you want to look up the value of a property, all you got to do is go to the Morgan County website, which is um, morgancountymaps.net, and you can look up any value of any property in the county. If you purchase a property or if you've refinanced, the lending institution is going to make you get a an appraisal and that's a market value. Again you can go to the Morgan County site, compare the appraised value to the county's value and make a determination whether it's overvalued or not. But uh, excuse me, it, market value, the appraisal isn't necessarily the market value. If, if a house sells but it's appraised for more than that, the sales price is the market value, isn't it? Wait, I didn't understand that. The sales price is the market value, not the appraisal. Yeah, but if you get an appraisal and you have an appraisal on a property, let's say you refinance your home, that's not a recent sale. So you could take that appraised value, that's what the lender is looking at. I'm thinking more at the time of purchase. I, I bought a well, house and the appraisal was higher than what I paid for it. Well, and the county taxed it on the appraisal. And you can take, you got the sale price, so why would you take the appraisal in? Well, the bank required an appraisal. Yeah, and, the bank required yeah. the appraisal. Yeah. yeah. But if you, let's say you have a business and you're going to refinance. I did that. I own a business down in Edwardsville. And about three years ago, I refinanced it. And the interest rate got down from like six and a half percent to three and a half percent. Uh, I had to get an appraisal done, and so I'd owned the business for a number of years. I was able to use that as market value uh, with the assessor's office. But if that, you take your taxes in. 
to protest them, they asked for an appraisal. And the appraisal I had was higher than what I paid for my house. And they so, would use the appraisal every time, though, Keith. Yeah, you wouldn't use your they appraisal for that. They won't take the market value. Yeah, yeah. Now, what, when... I mean, you, they won't take what you paid for it. Mm -hmm. They're going to want you to have the appraisal on it. But they're supposed to use the sale price, not the market value. That, that was my understanding. But. No, they don't have to use the sale price. They can use... If you have an appraisal, if you go down there to protest, they'll say, have you had an appraisal on it? That's mm -hmm. the first question they're going to ask you, right? Mm -hmm. And and they if you say <coughs> they raised my say, taxes say yes. the second year of ownership they raised yeah. my assessment the second year of ownership which was the same year that everybody else's went down they raised mine and they said let me see your appraisal well the only one I had was the one the bank did which was higher than what I paid for it and they said well you got a good deal you still got to pay on the appraised value well if you now, was it a foreclosure when you bought it? No, no. a brand new house. Brand what new house. What year was that, Keith? Nobody's lived in it. It'd be five years ago. Was it on the market? Yes. Well, you could have used that. You could have filed the state appeal and gotten it lower because the argument goes, why would a contractor who built a house accept a lower price if they could have got a higher price. The market dictates the value. Right. But he would have had to go over above the county commissioners to do that. He would ha wouldn't he? You he's, would. saying, he's saying the county commissioners made him, the, the review board made him have the appraisal. Would he have to go above that in order, if they said you've got to have the appraisal, would you have to go above them? Is there a way to go above them? To the well, if, you're, if a decision is not what you want it to be, you can file appeal with the state property tax appeal board. That, that's what I, that's what I was saying. And then go through the whole process there. So so we look at at the selling price. We can look at an appraisal. You can look at comparable sales, and you do that all the time as a realtor. You do CMAs, right? Comparative market analysis. And what do you do? You pick out sales most similar to the property you're looking at and you determine a market value based upon those sales which is the market and so if somebody comes to you and says i want to sell my house what do you do you go on the mls you pick out the most sales most similar to that do a cma cma and you tell them this is make whatever adjustments i mean if they got a, a swimming pool or if they got a shed out back you make some adjustments and say this is what the mark indicates that your house is worth. Well, you can do the same sort of thing, uh, look at comparable sales, and not have to do a full-blown appraisal. And a few years back in Morgan County here, we, we had a motel and we had a lumber yard. And we did a review, we gave it to an attorney to do a review, to make the determination whether an appeal was justified. The attorney filed the appeal, went forward with it, and got sizable reductions based upon comparable sales. The other thing you can look at is uniformity of assessments, but this is one that's pretty tough to, to uh, develop. You have to look at whether you are being sort of singled out, so to speak, and valued higher than all the other similar type properties within your area. That, that one is, is a pretty difficult thing to look at. When you look at commercial properties, the income approach to value is a good way to determine value. If you're going to buy, anyone here own rental properties? Okay. If you are thinking about buying a rental property, let's say an apartment building with six units in it, what do you want to look at? You want to look at the income and expenses over the past two, three years, whatever. And from that, you want to look at the income, you want to look at the expenses, and you want to capitalize that income stream flow. And that should give you a pretty good indicator 
of what that property is worth. But whatever approach you take, once you determine a value for your property, whether it be a, mm -hmm. uh, a standalone commercial building, whether it be a residence, whether it be an apartment complex, um, a shopping center, whatever, it's your responsibility to move forward with the appeal. Now you can do it yourself or you can work with a company similar to the one that I have, Property Tax Evaluation Services, abbreviated Property Tax Pro because that got to be too much of a mouthful stating all the time. And the appeal has to be filed on a timely basis. All the deadlines have to be met and you have to move forward with the appeal. If it's a corporation, you're going to have to be represented by legal counsel. So if, if you have a, an attorney that you retain, they can handle the appeal for you. Uh, we associate with, with attorneys um, throughout the state. Uh, if the, the way it works with us, if we have a client come to us, we'll do a review of the property and try to, to do a market analysis to come with a, up with a fair market value. Um, and then we take it and we give it to a real estate attorney or we give it to the attorney for the company and let them review it. They decide whether to move forward with the appeal or not. If they file the appeal, then we'll serve as expert witnesses at the hearing to testify as to how we came up with that market value. Um, if you're satisfied with the results from, from the county, then that's the end of the process right there. If you're like me, when I did my appeal way back when, I wasn't very happy with what they had done, and so I filed a state appeal and that's what you would have to do is move forward with a state appeal or the attorney that you retain move forward with a state appeal. And right now, unfortunately, in the state of Illinois, like so many things, they're understaffed. It takes a long time, a waiting period. Um, some of the appeals that we've hired attorneys to handle um, are two and three years old now and they're still at the state waiting for a decision. But once that happens, then they kind of fall like dominoes for the uh, uh, years moving forward. But if you file a state appeal, you don't get a decision before the next filing period in the county. You have to file an appeal there to protect whatever comes from that state appeal. If you don't, if you get a reduction from the state, it'll only be good for one year and then it'll go back to the higher value again. So that's sort of a quick overview of the property tax system. Like I said, I, my background includes, I, I started out as a school teacher, decided that, that uh, I wanted to try to make a difference and I ran for the legislature and uh, well first I ran for the Senate against a gentleman that had been in for 20 some years and didn't feel like he was doing the kind of job that should be done and uh, was defeated but shortly after he won re-election he died and there was a vacancy in the Senate and that's when the new constitution came into being Ogilvie was the governor and uh, the vacancy was a Democratic seat and Ogilvie was a Republican and with the death of that one senator it was 50-50 in the Senate so Ogilvie wouldn't appoint a replacement so the seat stayed vacant for two years and he was a representative I ran for a representative I got elected and I was I was in the legislature for eight years uh, started my own business never really thought much about the property tax situation until I built my business and I started dealing with those tax issues again 
And I had a friend who was an attorney, and I said, you know, I got this idea for a consulting business that I think there's a real mess in the state. And I explained it to him, and we started, and one thing led to another. We ended up with property tax evaluation services, and that was in 1998, almost 20 years ago. So, and we have found all kinds of extreme cases across the state of Illinois. Um, I, I mentioned that before we had a uh, industrial uh, concern in Montgomery County. They were a family-owned business. They sold out to another company that infringed on a on a patent or a copyright or something. They had to file bankruptcy. They were liquidated, and a concern in California bought them out. Well, they had been there several years, and I had done all kinds of mailings, was contacted by them, did a review, and found out that, gosh, things didn't seem quite right. Had the attorney uh, take a look at the work we had done, filed the appeal, when all was said and done, their property tax bill was lowered by over 90, well, a little bit over 100,000, like $102,000 a year. And we just similarly got done with, with a state appeal, and then two years after that reductions on a bank uh, in Madison County where they were paying, well, valued, um, I think it was three million more than what they should have been, but they were paying 70, 70 some thousand dollars more a year than what they should have. But it goes all the way from that to doing a review and finding out that the property's valued where it should be. So my, my conclusion is you, you got to do your due diligence and, and if you feel that something may be wrong, there's a possibility there is and you ought to have it looked at. Yes. So last time my house was assessed, I actually was there when the assessor came and she said, well, this paperwork that was filed in the 50s when your house was built said this is a breezeway, but it's actually a kitchen. And then I said the house sold like three or four times since the 50s and you have a, an actual price, market price. It doesn't matter what the paperwork says from the 50s, it's what the market says. So that's what you have to do is you have to go and... You got to look at the market, the yeah. Yeah, you got to look at the... You got to look at what the, the market uh, says. And, you know, like I said, you, you have uh, now, compared to 1990s, 1980s, 1970s, everything's on the internet now. It's just amazing what you can find there. John, I had a question about rental property. About uh, what? About rental property. Yeah. Okay. Uh, several years ago, um, I happened to be talking to the assessor in Champaign County. And he, in Champaign County, they have a, um, a very unusual situation, but I found out now that Sangamon County has it as well. Um, if you are, own a single family rental property yeah. um, in Champaign County, you can have the owner occupied exemption on that property if you have certain criteria in your lease. Yeah. In other words, if you put in your lease that um, the leasee understands that a portion of their rent is going to pay the tax bill, which of course it does, yeah. um, and you put that in the lease, and if you do other, other things, you can get a single property exemption right. on a rental property. Yeah. I cannot get Morgan County to accept that. Yeah. And I, I and address and uh, it's apparently it's it, but it's apparently it's a state statute as well. Well, I started working with an attorney several years ago, Teddy Bramblecamp, who we know is not here anymore, at, on it because he was very interested in it as well. But have you ever ran into this anywhere? Um, not really. Okay. No, we we concentrate more on commercial properties. Okay. Well, um, yeah. I I do know if you have a a single family rental property, you can't use the income approach to value on that. No, no, I understand that. You got to uh, use comparables. You no, know, I understand that, but 
this makes a huge difference because in as far as your taxes are concerned well sure that if you get that owner occupied exemption right, that but let me tell you on the other hand what happened uh, chairman of the board of review in madison county had to resign his seat because he was giving him he had rental property and was getting the owner occupied exemption and he was forced to resign as chairman of the board of review. Well, the Champaign See, County, so I, I really don't know okay. what. The, I'm just telling you, it yeah. came, and what he told me, it came about as a result of the fact that properties were being built on leased properties. In other words, the uh, Lake, Lake, Lake Springfield, uh, Lake Decatur, all of those kind of properties. And so they were building these multi million dollar properties on these, but it was leased properties. I don't know how that ties into that, but anyway, he said that that's how it came about. But he said you can get this, and he says it's a statewide rule. But I cannot get. Yeah, the I, to I've it. never. Yeah, right into know. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what you want to say, Yeah, I guess um, you know you kind of touched on some things here, but I guess the things that I'm looking for is um, I've been in my property for a eight, nine years, and um, over the last few years, I mean, we refinanced, but then over the last few years, it seems like every year my property tax keeps going up and keep going up and keep going up, and my neighborhood, there, there are, I mean, behind my house, there were two properties that were tore down by the city, and then across the street from my house, there's been sitting a house that had a house fire the year that we moved in, and the guy who owns it, it's a, a rental property, has pretty much done nothing with it. Random things, I think he starts to get in trouble with the city and then he'll fix something. And then there was a foreclosure across the street and I think they sold that for like $10,000. And I mean, I have all these properties around me that I wanna know how the property value of the houses in my neighborhood will impact my well, property taxes and what I can do about that. Where a property is located, uh, the value is going to be impacted by what's around them. And, and probably if I were in your shoes, I'd invest another couple hundred dollars and get another appraisal done okay. and move forward with the county. I mean, uh, so I mean, if you've got a friend that's a realtor, have them do a CMA for you and see what they come up with. And if it indicates that the value may not be there, then go to an appraiser and have an appraisal done. Where do you live? What's your address? I live on Southeast 465. I'm just right down the street from Salem School. Somehow you've got to arrive at, at the Three value for the property. You can't go, my taxes are high, my taxes keep going up. I mean, everybody's got that okay. concern. My taxes are too high. I just feel my, like they're... My taxes keep going up. <laughs> you got to come up with a market value for the property and whether that is an appraisal or a recent sale or an income approach to value or comparable sales you have to have that evidence in place to move forward with an appeal and you can only appeal every four years when you're, when yeah. you're published you well the properties are are there's, it goes in the quadrennials. Every four years, the reassessment, the general reassessment year. Now, in a county like Morgan, they'll probably do the biggest part of the county at one time, if not all of it. In small, in bigger counties like Madison County, they divided it into four sections, yeah. and they do. That's what we do here. Okay. Yeah, well, they do a fourth of it each yeah. each year. Every four years, it's reassessed, but they can still change the assessment on your property and you can file an appeal every year I mean you've got that yeah, right yeah. so if you go in and add an addition onto your house they could very well raise that assessment before the next quad okay so when the property taxes are published in December here then I have until the end of January to you're going to have 30 days from publication and, and what you ought to do is call the assessor's office and say when you're publishing and then go to the website and look up your value. What was that website again did you say it was? Morgan uh, Morgan 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 Morgan. 
Morganmaps.net. Let me see. The website was www.morganmaps.net. Yeah, morganmaps.net. We had a and, much better website. Called and and you, you put in your... And the uh, county did away with well, it. You, you put in your uh, PIN number, or I think it's a place for an address, and it'll bring all the information up on the property. And then the assessor has the appeal forms, but the thing you want to do is um, start moving forward with coming up with the value for your, for your house. The other thing that I see around here is that people don't take, they don't have their exemptions correct. A lot of people aren't, don't have all the exemptions on it that they deserve. You may only have the owner-occupied exemption because of your age or whatever, but so many people don't have so all the correct exemptions on there. Yeah, okay. yeah, you'll find that out too. Yeah. Or the vet exemption? No, it's 2600. Hmm. Or the vet, there's a veteran's exemption. Right, right. Veterans, there's a disability exemption. I mean, there's all kinds of exemptions. Um, John, do you use the income approach on commercial properties at all? Do we use it? Uh, yes. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I'm in a bank, and it's 4,500 square feet on a slab, and as a bank, we're being taxed nearly $9,000. If tomorrow that were a laundromat, I assume the price well, would come down. Well, that's going to be valued as a financial institution, okay? And there are enough comparable sales to come up with a, a market value. We, you know, I'd indicated that uh, a bank in Madison County, we looked at their main facility. They also had branch banks in an adjoining county, and just yesterday the hearings were held on those, and appraisals were done. And those appraisals showed values significantly less than what the county had them valued at. And a state appeal was filed the previous year, and so the county, or uh, the attorney that 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 we retained to represent the bank, uh, made a motion that they stipulate to the appraised values, and they went right along with it. But those appraised values basically relied on comparable sales. So you can't say, well, it, you know, if the bank shut down the bar and became a laundromat, uh, it, it, it's a going concern now, so they're going to look at the values of financial institutions. Because there are enough sales there to do. You don't have to stay within the county no. on commercial sales. I, I've just always struggled with that because I know people who make hundreds of thousands of dollars out of a shack. Yeah. And people who have large uh, campuses of, of uh, whether it's industry or not, who barely squeak by. Yeah. And, and to, to even consider the income approach on commercial property seems absurd to me. Yeah. But they, they do. Well, we've gone in in counties with commercial property that's income generating and the Board of Review asks for the inf income information, mm -hmm. which is a well, legitimate They'd request. have to, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it. If I had the brochures here. I got a business card on the front. If anybody's interested in discussing uh, uh, property tax issue, feel free to give me a call. You can also go to our website, which is Property Tax Pro, www.property, P R O P E R T Y, Tax Pro, T A X P R O, dot net. There's a, uh, a link there where you can contact us. There's an 800 number there, but you can also send an email and uh, I'll be happy to respond to it as best I can. Like I said, I can't give legal advice because I'm not a lawyer, but I can sit and discuss property tax issues. I can tell you, back in 98, I did sit down and write a do-it-yourself guide to property tax appeals, 
It wasn't a, big, a bestseller, <laughs> but it did end up in over, there's like 600 libraries in the state, over 400 libraries had it in. I'm sure most of them discarded it by now, but uh, this went through the step-by-step -step procedures to property tax appeals for residential properties in, in the state, outside of Cook County, because Cook County is a different animal altogether. So uh, I'll be glad to answer any other questions you may have. I thank you for the invitation to come up here, and uh, if you think I can help you anyway, give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.